بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحبه ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك الحق المبين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناسح الأمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله Without question there is great benefits inside of the stories that are contained in the Quran and in the Sunnah and we should spend much time reading over these stories and being familiar with them and becoming familiar with them so that we may gain benefit and take a lesson from them and we should strive hard and exert ourselves in this effort because unfortunately you have many of the Muslims or a portion of them who will spend their time reading fiction fiction, stories of fiction, novels and the like and unfortunately you have from amongst them those who read books that are contained therein kufr and shirk like Harry Potter like the Twilight series so on and so forth and you will have individuals who will have read the whole of the Harry Potter series the whole of the Twilight series and these are books that contain therein kufr and shirk and these are books that are sizable these are books that are, have a great size to them and they will spend their time reading these books filled with kufr and shirk but that same individual has yet to read the Quran from cover to cover has yet to read the translation from cover to cover has yet to read Riyadh al-Salihin from cover to cover has yet to read the Mukhtasir of Al-Bukhari, let alone Sahih Al-Bukhari from cover to cover, so on and so forth. So in that, no doubt, there is a great tragedy. Bidnilahi ta'ala, these next few minutes, we want to look at some of the authentic stories that have come in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And gain some benefit from them, bidnilahi ta'ala. And gain a lesson from them, bidnilahi ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala, He says in His noble book, وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ, المف... فأولئك هم الْمُفْلِحُونَ That whoever is saved from the covetousness, from the stinginess, from the miserliness of his soul, then verily they are the ones who are successful. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ They are the ones who are successful without doubt. So we want you to have this in mind ta'ala, because we live in a time and we live in an era where stinginess is rampant, where covetousness is common. We live in a time where people are only worried about themselves and only worried about their own interests. But we need to be warned about the likes of this stinginess. We need to be warned about the likes of this covetedness. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in a hadith that has been collected by Imam Muslim in a sahih, عن جابر رضي الله تعالى عنه قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اتقوا الشح beware beware of stinginess beware of stinginess فإن الشح أهلك من كان قبلكم because this stinginess this covetedness verily it destroyed those who were before you it destroyed those who were before you that which was destructive to those who were before us is to us destructive because that which is destructive is destructive like Russian roulette for example Russian roulette is not something that is safe for the Russians dangerous for the Americans but rather you find that it is something that is dangerous for all dangerous for them, dangerous for us dangerous for those, dangerous for those ones as well so that which is destructive is destructive and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he's warning us to beware of being stingy Take caution from being stingy because verily it destroyed those who came before us. Hamanahum, ala safiku dima'ahum, 
It led them to spilling the blood of each other. It led them to spill each other's blood. And it led them to make halal that which was haram for them. Because of their greed, because of their stinginess, because of their chasing after the dunya, they made those things that were haram. They said, no, no, they're really halal. Because they were concerned about gathering wealth. They were stingy, greedy, and miserly. So they made those things which were really haram, they tried to play them off as if they were halal due to this. Bithnillahi ta'ala, we want to take some benefit. I want you to keep this in mind. Keep this concept of stinginess and miserliness in, in mind. And I want you to reflect. I want you to listen attentively, bithnillahi ta'ala, to that which has been collected by Imam al-Bukhari. عن أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه ذكر رجلا من بني إسرائيل سأل بعض بني إسرائيل أن يصرفه ألف دينار the, On the authority of Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه He narrates that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم He said that or that he mentioned a man from the children of Israel. He mentioned a man from Bani Israel. Then he asked others from Bani Israel to loan to him 1,000 dinar. He was asking around, looking for a loan. He was in need of a loan of 1,000 dinar. So that he can get back on his feet, so that he can take care of what he needs to take care of, so on and so forth. And this happens to each and every one of us from time to time. We may find ourselves in a situation that we may be in need of a loan. But we know and we understand in these days and times how hard it is to get a loan from an individual. You ask the person, can I borrow $20 because I need some gas? Unfortunately, you'll find most of the people, they're only worried about themselves. Yeah, can I have $20 to get some gas? As opposed to giving you the $20, he want to ask you a 50 million questions. Well, why did you come here then if you didn't have any gas? Well, why did you this, why did you that if you didn't have any gas? Well, why did you think about this and this, that and that, that and this before you know you're in need of gas and so on and so forth? You know what? I don't got it. You need 20, I need 20. Gas expensive. You don't see the prices? Yeah, subhanAllah. But the same individual, he'll go out and he'll spend more than that on lunch. The same individual, he'll go out and he'll spend more than that on that which will bring him no benefit. And his brother's not asking, give me $20. He's saying, let me borrow $20. I'll give you $20 back. I just want to borrow it. I'll give it back to you later. And you'll find that he don't even want to do that. وَإِيَادَ بِاللَّهِ This man, he was in need of a thousand dinar. So he asked around, who will let me borrow a thousand dinar? So he found an individual who will let him borrow this sum of money. فَقَالَ so the man he said to him, He said, bring to me witnesses so that we may utilize them as a witness over this transaction. Then yes, I will give you this thousand dinar as a loan. But let us bring witness, witnesses to witness that I'm giving you this as a loan. So the man he said to him, He said, Allah is enough to be a witness. So the man he said to him, the one who was going to give the loan, he said, فَأْتِنِي بِالْكَفِيرِ So bring me a guarantor. Okay, no witnesses. Bring me a guarantor to witness this transaction. So the man who was looking for the loan, he said to him, كَفَى بِاللَّهِ كَفِيلًا That Allah is enough as a guarantor. So at this point, because these are two believers, the man who was going to give the loan, he said, Sadat, said, you are spoken the truth. This is correct. Allah is enough. Allah suffices us as a witness and Allah suffices us as a guarantor. So he gave the man the loan until the prescribed time. He gave him a loan for such and such a time. Within this time, he paid back the loan and the like. So he gave him a loan based on the agreement. So the man who took the loan, he went to the, he, he, he caught a boat and he went throughout the oceans and the seas and he took care of his business. He took care of what he needed to take care of. And then 
after taking care of his business, he looked for a boat. He looked for a boat by way of which he can go back. He looked for, he looked for a boat. He looked for a boat so that he can make it back within the prescribed time so he can repay the loan. He looked hard. But he didn't find any boats. He tried his best to fulfill the amana. He tried his best to make it back in the time frame of which he had agreed upon he would make it back in. And this is the way of the mu'min. He tries his best to fulfill his obligations because like it comes in a hadith that has been collected by Imam al-Bayhaqi. With the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِنَّهُ لَا إِيمَانَ لِمَنْ لَا أَمَانَةَ الله. He said that there is no iman, verily, there is no iman for the one who has no trust with him. For the one who has no amana with him, no trust, he can't be trusted, then there's no iman for him. There's no iman for him. Naam. So the believer, he strives hard to fulfill his agreements. He strives hard to fulfill the trust. So this man was striving hard to fulfill his trust. He wasn't looking for any and every excuse. But he was striving hard. He was looking for a boat. He was looking for throughout the ports, throughout yeah, the, 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 the shorelines and the like. He was looking for a boat, any vessel that can take him back so he can fulfill and he can pay back the loan within the time frame. But he couldn't find one. He couldn't find any boat that would get him back in time. He tried his best. He tried his hardest. He couldn't find any vessel that would carry him back in time. So he took a piece of wood. He took a piece of wood. And then he bore a hole into it. فَأَدْخَلَ فِيهَا أَلْفْ دِنَارٍ وَصُحِيفَةٍ مِّنْهُ إِلَّا صَاحِبِهِ So he bore a hole in it and then he put the thousand dinar inside of it. And he also put a letter inside of it from him to his companion. From him to the one who had loaned him the loan. نعم ثُمَّ زَزَّجَ مَوْضِعَهَا And then he put a piece of glass or he laid in a piece of glass over it. Nah, because he's going to throw it inside of the, the ocean. Nah. So he put a piece of glass over it so, so that the water won't creep into it and the like. Nah. Then he went to the ocean. فقال. Then he went to the ocean. And putting his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He beseeched Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, Allahumma innaka ta'lamu anni kuntu tasallaftu Fulanan afdinarin. He said, Oh Allah, you know that verily I have borrowed from such and such one thousand dinar. Fasalani kafila. And he asked me for a kafir. He asked me for a guarantor. Fakultu. So I said to him, so I said, Kafa bilahi kafila. He said, so I said to him, Allah is enough as a guarantor, and he was pleased to have you as a guarantor. Mind you, the man, he's who? He's beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. He said, وَسَأَلَنِي shahida," And he asked me for a witness. فَقُلْتُ So I said, كَفَى بِاللَّهِ shahida." فَرَضُ bik. He said, so I said, Allah suffices us as a witness, and he was pleased with you. وَأَنِّي جَهَدْتُ أَنْ أَجِدَ مَرْكَبًا أَبْعَثُ إِلَيْهِ الَّذِي لَهُ فَلَمْ أَقْدِرْ He said, and I tried my hardest, I strove so hard to find a vessel that can carry me so I can give to him that which belongs to him. But I was not able to find it. وَإِنِّي أَسْتَوْدِعُكَهَا So verily, I'm entrusting it to you, O Allah. I'm entrusting it to you, O Allah. فَرَمَا بِهَا فِي الْبَحْرِ حَتَّى وَجَلَتْ فِي So we put it inside of the ocean, watching it bounce across the waves until it was out of sight. But this man, he was a believer who understood the reality of tawakkul. He understood the reality. So he took the means. He took every means by way of which he could repay the debt. He strived his best to find a vessel. He couldn't find a vessel. When he couldn't find a vessel, he saw this piece of wood. So he bore a hole into the piece of wood. He placed the money therein. He placed a note therein. And then he covered it with a piece of glass so that no water in that will come therein and destroy that which it was carrying. And he beseeched Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And then he put it in the ocean. Then he left. Then he left. وَهُوَ فِي ذَلِكَ يَلْتَمِسُ مَرْكَبًا يَخْرُوجُ إِلَى بَلَدِهِ And then even with this, he still was looking for a vessel to take him back to his land, to take him back to his country. فَخَرَجَ الرَّجُلُ الَّذِي كَانَ أَسْلَفَهُ But the man who had given the loan, the one who had paid out the loan, he went out. He went down to the dock. يَنظُرْ لَعَلَّ مَرْكَبًا قَدْ جَاءَ بِمَالِهِ He went down to the port to see whether or not a, a vessel had came in that was carrying this man and thus his money. So he went out to see, did the man arrive back with my money yet? نعم But he didn't find the man. He didn't find any vessel carrying the man coming back with the money in which he had lent. But did he get down about that? Did he fall into a depression about that? Did he get an anxiety attack about that? No. He made the best of the situation. And like this is the way of the believer. They make the best of any given situation. فَإِذَا بِالْخَشَبَ So he found a piece of wood. He didn't find any vessel. No boat, no boat came into port. But he found this piece of wood that was there. Ah. فَإِذَا بِالْخَشَبَةِ التي فيها المال فأخذها لأهله حطبا. So he took this piece of wood, wherein it had his money therein, but he didn't know his money was there. He took the piece of wood, making the best out of the situation, so as to utilize it as firewood for his family. He went to look for his money, didn't find his money. He found some wood. We take the wood as firewood, making the best of the situation. Now, but he didn't know his money was inside of it. He didn't know that. So when he took it back to his family, so as to utilize it as firewood, فَلَمَّا نَشْرَهَا وَجَدَ مَعَلْ وَصَحِيفَ But when he broke it, when he chopped it up, because as we know, you can't put a whole log inside of the furnace, right? Or inside of the fire, because it won't burn like that. You have to chop it down into little pieces so that it can burn efficiently. So when he went to chop it into pieces, he found the money, he found his money, and he found the note. So there was no ambiguity, no confusion. He knew that this was from the one who I loaned the money to, to me. Because it was addressed to him. Letting him know that this is his money. Naam. So he took the money. Alhamdulillah. He made the best of the situation, then he came home to find what? That good was increased upon good. Not just did he get firewood, but he got the money in which he had lent to the man. Allahu Akbar. ثُمَّ قَدْمَ الَّذِي كَانَ أَسْلَفُهُ Then the man who borrowed the money, he came to him. فَأَتَى بِأَلْفِ دِنَارٍ He came to him, but he came to him with what? With another thousand dinar. You see? This is the way of the mu'min. He put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He bore the whole, he put the money, the note, he put the, the glass, he put it in the ocean. But with that, he understands that he still has to take the asbab. He still has to take the means. So even with that, he didn't say, okay, I put it in the ocean, khalas, that's it. I ain't got to look for another thousand dinar to bring him nothing. His is in the ocean. Naam. Huh? Unlike many of us, we put it in there, we say, hey, you ain't get it? Man, I put it in the mail, so <laughs> it'll show up one of these days. Right? Like, he didn't do that, but he still came with another thousand. Took it every means possible. Every means possible to repay his debt. So he came back, he had another thousand with him. Naam. So he planned on giving him this thousand. Even though he put a thousand aside, he planned on giving him the thousand. Naam. فقال, so he said to him, explaining to him what had taken place. He said, Wallahi, ma ziltu jahidan fi markabin لآتيك بمالك فما وجأت مركبا قبل الذي أتيت فيه. He said that verily, I, I, up until this point, and you know, I didn't stop. I never see striving hard, looking as hard as I can to find a vessel to bring me here so I can bring you your money. But I wasn't able to find a vessel before this one was brought me just now. This was the first vessel I found. So the man, the believer. Now, because he realizes, look, the man came with another thousand. Not like the crooked, wicked one who saying to himself, oh, he don't know I got the other thousand. Now I can get this one and have two thousand. Okay. Huh? The crooked one would have did that. Would have said, okay, you got my thousand, give my thousand. 
Not telling him that he got this thousand already. It was delivered to him. Allah Ta'ala delivered to him his thousand. See the crooked one, he won't mention that. But this one, he had taqwa. This one, he had iman. He was a believer. So we asked the man. He said, Hal kunta ba'ata ilayya shay? He said, did you send me something? Huh? So the man now, he don't know that the piece of wood had reached him. He doesn't know that. So instead of getting into all of that, right? He just told the man, he said, أُخْبِرُكَ أَنِّي لَمْ أَجِدْ مَرْكَبًا قَبْلِ الَّذِي جِئْتُ فِيهِ He said, look, I'm telling you, I didn't find a boat before the one just brought me. You asking me, I said, I'm telling you, look, I'm telling you, I didn't, I couldn't find a boat before the one that just brought me here. Wait. So the man, he said, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ أَدَّى عَنْكَ الَّذِي بَعَثَّ فِي الْخَشَفَ He said, verily, Allah has already paid off the debt by sending to me that which was inside of the wood. That which is inside of the wood. It already came to me. It already reached me. نعم. فَانْصَرِفْ بِالْأَحْضِ نَارْ رَاشِدًا So the man who came to repay the debt, he left. Because his debt was already repaid by the money he put inside of the log. So he left with the thousand dinar that he was going to give. Not knowing that his money had got there, he left. Upon guidance, he left righteously. In this story, there are so many benefits. From the beautiful honesty that was there on behalf of the man who had lent the money. From the beauty and putting one's trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while still taking the means, while still taking all of the means necessary by way of which to facilitate an action. Because Allah ta'ala, He has made this obligatory upon us that we take the means, we do the footwork, but we know and we understand that the tawfiq, the success is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The success is only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But still, Allah ta'ala has made it obligatory upon us that we take the means. Not like the ones who are deviant, not like the ones who are astray, who will sit out in the sun all day with their hand out saying, look, whatever falls inside of it, I'm going to eat. Whatever falls in the bowl, then that will be my provision. And whatever don't, don't, and that's it. And he just sit there like that saying, I put my trust in Allah. That's not how one put his trust in Allah. One puts his trust in Allah by taking the means. By taking the means, by striving hard, doing the footwork, but knowing that the tawfiq is from Allah Ta'ala. The rizq is from Allah Ta'ala. But with that, he still strives hard. He still works hard. He still strives and he still works. But he knows and he understands that whatever comes from money, that whatever comes from provisions, is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So, alhamdulillah, all praise and all thanks belong to Allah Ta'ala. But the believer takes the means. We see a beautiful example of that in this story. These are the kind of stories we need to spend our time with. These are the kind of stories we need to learn, to memorize. Because within these stories, there is much benefit. Within this story, you'll find it filled with tawheed. You'll find it filled with iman. You'll find it filled with benefit. Not like the other ones that are filled with kufr and filled with shirk and the like. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffice us with that which is in the Quran and the sunnah from the stories that we benefit from them and that He keeps us far removed and that rather that He makes us a those who don't even desire to read the likes of these filthy, evil, despicable stories that contain kufr and shirk. Hada aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa astaghfiruhu. Bismillah, walhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, ala rasulillah wa ba'd. There are so many benefits so many fruits, so much to be learned and gained from the likes of these tremendous stories. Bidnilahi ta'ala, we want to share with you one more. It has also been collected by Imam al-Bukhari. You see, if we were spending our time reading Sahih al-Bukhari, we would be well acquainted with these stories and the benefits that are contained therein. And verily, these are stories that have therein yani, amazing aspects to them. They are amazing stories. Amazing. And, and they have in them things which we should aspire for. Because the honesty and the truthfulness from the likes of these individuals is, is amazing. And we should strive to be honest and truthful like that. Like these individuals, like these believers who are in these stories. And Abi Huraira. رضي الله تعالى عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال On the authority of Abu Hurairah 
who narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "I want you to listen to the amazement or the amazing yani, uh, situation of this story. How amazing it is! How amazing it is!" And then I want you to reflect on people who live in our time right now and how far they are from these beautiful characteristics that are inside of the story. This story is amazing. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, That a man, he bought from another man a piece of land. A man, he bought from another man a piece of land. فَوَجِدَ الرَّجُلُ الَّذِي اشْتَرَى الْأَقَارَ فِي أَقَارِهِ جَرَّةً فِيهَا ذَهَبٌ But the man who had purchased the land, he had found within the land that he had just purchased, he found therein gold, a deposit of gold. But yeah, now I just want, I just want to stop there. Most people, if they buy a piece of land, right? And they find therein gold. The natural reaction will be, I struck it rich. Allahu Akbar. Taking it straight to the market. Right? He already be counting what he gonna do. I'm about to buy a house. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go travel. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a. You see? But the one who has taqwa, the one who has wara, the one who, he fears Allah. He don't want to take nothing that don't belong to him. Naam? Is this how he is? Okay, he bought this land. But it, now you know us, we make a mean excuses. Well, it is my land, I do own it now. Uh, you don't make a mean excuses, right? What did he do? This man, he went to the man who had given him the land. Now, فَقَالَ فَقَالَ الَّذِي اشْتَرَى الْأَقَارَ خُذْ ذَهَبَكْ مِنِّي إِنَّمَا اشْتَرَيْتُ مِنْكَ الْأَرْضَ وَلَمْ أَبْتَعْ مِنْكَ الذَّهَبِ He told the man, he said, listen, I want you to take this gold because I only bought for I only bought land from you. I only bought the land. I didn't buy the gold. You see? Now I want you to think about the natural reaction of someone who came like this. Right? You sold a piece of land that had gold. You didn't know. Now the person who bought who, who bought the land from you is coming back saying, Look, you know what? Take your gold, man. I just bought the land. I didn't buy the gold. So take take your gold back. Most people would be like, Okay, thank you. And that'd be that, right? Subhanallah. But again, you're dealing with two people who have taqwa, who have iman, who have wara. Subhanallah. So what did he say? The honesty. I want you to look at the honesty here. It's so subhanallah, so beautiful. So what did he say to him? فَقَالَ الَّذِي لَهُ الْأَرُضِ So the one who previously, originally was the, yani, who had sold the land, who owned the land, he told him what? He said, إِنَّمَا بِعْتُكَ الْأَرْضَ وَمَا فِيهَا He said, verily, I sold you the land and whatever's in it. Say, telling him what? It's yours. I, just, I sold the land, it was ever in the land. It's not my goal, it's your goal. Right? Now, again, I want you to think of the natural reaction of someone who put forth this level of honesty and the man is telling him, no, no, take the gold back. He's going to say, okay, I'm not going to ask you twice. Right? But he said, no, it's your goal. And the man said, no, it's your goal. Now, mind you, you'll have them both arguing with each other. No, you take it. No, you take it. No, it's yours. No, it's yours. Man, I'm telling you it's your goal. No, man, I'm telling you it's your goal. They're arguing so much, they can't settle it amongst themselves. So they said, you know what? Khalas, we're going to a hakim. We got to go to a hakim, a judge. He going to judge between us. This is amazing. Each of them fighting over who goal really belong to. Not like now. It's not fighting, no, it's yours, no, it's yours. The fight be over what? It's mine. No, it's mine. No, no, it's mine. No, not that. No, you take it. No, you take it. No, you take it. Subhanallah. You see? The iman. The honesty. Subhanallah. So they went to a hakim. Fatahakama. Huh? Fatahakama ila rajulin. So they went to a judge, a man to be a judge in this case. فَقَالَ الَّذِي تَحَاكَمَا إِلَيْهِ So the one who they went to, to take as a judge, a mediator between them and this situation, he asked them, now look at the wisdom of the judge. Look at the wisdom, because he sees now, this is a situation that if I give it to any one party, nobody's going to be happy. Because they're going to think that they took something that really wasn't theirs. You understand? The wisdom. The wisdom of the believers. Huh? So, the judge, he said, 
He said, do you, do you got children? You guys got children? Look at the hikmah now. Because now you, a person from the outside may not necessarily understand. What's he getting at? Why are you asking him he got kids for? What does that have to do with anything? What do they got to do with a land and a positive goal? He really got, he got kids. So he asked me, so you guys got, do you have children? Do you have children? One of them said, one of them said, yeah, I have a, I have a boy. I have a son. Now, another one he said, Leah, Jaria. He said, I have a, a daughter. Now, so the judge, what he said, Fakala Ankihu Gulama Al Jaria. He said, Marry the boy to the girl. Right? Utilizing what? Utilizing the wealth, the profit from that deposit of gold to pay her dowry and to take care of them. Let them get married off of that money. You understand? Now what? This is a third party who they both did to, benefiting from it. Right? So they was okay with that. They said, okay. That seems fair. Right? But then to add to the fairness, he told them, both of them, he said, وَأَنْفِقُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمَا Huh? He said, and spend on it from your, and, 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 yani, spend on it, on yourselves as well. On both families. Let the children get married, spin on them, and spin on yourselves too. But because remember now, the Hakim, he is a believer, a mu'min. What did he say? And then he added to it, he said, What the sadaqa? And give charity. And both of you give charity too. Make sure there's a portion of charity. Whatever you get from wealth, whatever you get from money, make sure that a portion of it is charity. A portion of it is charity that you give in charity. So whatever you get, there should always be an allocation of a portion of it for charity. Every paycheck, there should be an allocation of a portion of charity. You come into some money you wasn't thinking about, there should be a portion of it for charity. Naam, this is the way of the believer. Look at the beauty that is contained in this story. Look at the beauty. And this ain't no make-believe, made-up tale. This is something that actually happened. As the Prophet Wasallam has informed us, this is something which has actually happened. I want you to look at the truthfulness that is contained in this story. I want you to look at the noble character that is contained in this story. I want you to look at the genuine concern for his brother and the genuine concern for others that is contained in this story. And then I want you to reflect that upon how we are. I want you to use that as a motivation so that we change and that we become better and that we exhibit the likes of these noble characteristics that are contained in this story. Because when the stories come, Allah Ta'ala, He tells us these stories for what? So that we may gain benefit from it, not just so we may be informed of what happened. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells us these stories so that what? We may gain benefit from them, not just so we may be informed of what happened, but so that we may gain benefit. We may take a lesson, we may utilize their, those these stories to become better, we may utilize these stories to stay away from the harm that we have been taught about that happened to those who came before us, so that we don't fall into that which they fell into. I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala and يجعلنا من الذين يستمعون قولا فيتبعون أحسنا. We ask that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes us of a, of a people who hear a statement they follow the best of it. What's Allah Taala أن يوفقني وياكم لما يحبه ويرضى. And we ask that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala gives me the success and you the success of doing that which He loves. هذا يا عباد الله أقول قولي هذا مستغفر الله لي ولكم واستغفروا وأقيموا الصلاة فإن الصلاة تنهى عن الفشاء والمنكر.